Hello Blender fans and fellow YouTubers. Welcome to another tutorial of the Blender Mechanic. We continue today with uh, one more of uh, follow-up tutorials on the brake pod assembly. Um, it will entail the mechanics, the rotation and movement of our components so far of the assembly we've been making. So here are my main Blender page here. I've already pulled up and included our previous um, uh, models that we've made up to this point. Um, I've imported, I've actually appended the uh, slack adjuster. I had my uh, push rod and my spring all on one one save file and I had to append this. So I'll just quickly show you how to append your slack adjuster um, if you don't have it in there. So what you'll do is you'll go to your file over here you'll find append and it's going to bring up your folders here. So now what you'll do is you'll find your folder where you have saved your particular model you're looking for. In this case, I'm looking for my slack adjuster. So I'm going to pull that up over there. And it's bringing up all these subfolders, which each contain their content. Now, the one I'm interested in in particular is all I want is to um, bring in the object on its own. I don't want to bring in the light, the material, anything really like that. I just want to bring in my object. So I'm going to hit object, which will contain a couple of items as well there. I'm going to try and find my slack adjuster and there we go. So select your slack adjuster, hit append and here we have my slack adjuster. So I get two over there. Um, I'm going to delete this one, but that's as easy as it is. So anyways, let's get rid of this one. There we go, delete. Now, what we'll do today, what we're doing here is um, our slack adjuster will be rotating on its X axis or in its Y axis and it will be locked to allow only for a certain degree or range of rotation. So that's what we'll focus on. We're gonna use our limit rotation constraint on this one and this push rod assembly we will allow for it to travel on the x-axis only by a certain amount as well and lock it in place so what we'll do is we'll apply our limit location constraint on that one and then we're going to combine the two of them together to rotate and move at the same time in, a, in their locked ranges that we've set for them on the slack adjuster. Okay, so now I've included this clevis over here. This is the piece that be holding our end, our top piece here of our slack adjuster. Um, I'm gonna move it over to our um, push rod end over there. Actually, let's get it an autographic front view and scale that, uh, enlarge that a little bit, zoom in. Okay, so, and I'm gonna put it in Z in the uh, wireframe, so hit Z. And I'm just gonna make sure I've got it centered and where I want it. It's gonna move it a little bit more on the x-axis to the negative, to the right-hand side, like something like that. So that should be good enough. Hit Enter Z, get out of wireframe, and it's centered. Okay, good. So next step is our clevis is gonna be our main contact point here. So I will make, I will attach our push rod to our clavis so I'll be parenting them so hit so select your push rod shift right click on your mouse button to select your push rod and then control P to make it apparent to parent the two objects so I'll keep transformations there like so so now what is what what I've done here is I've essentially made them like one object um, when I move our clevis, select our clevis, our push rod moves with it. And that's exactly what I want. Let's go back in front of the graphic view. Okay, good. So we've got one thing set there. Next, let's focus on our rotation of a slack adjuster. Now, the way that works in a brake pot assembly is it's, it's only allowed to really rotate a certain amount. Any more outside of this spec indicates either wear or some failure. So what we'll allow for here is a, th a, a 
maximum of a 30 degree movement for a slack adjuster. It has to sit, it's got to sit at a slight angle below 90 degrees. So I'm going to put it at 80 degrees here. So I will uh, set it to a, uh, I'll rotate it on Y, so R, Y, and I'm going to set minus 10. And this angle we got here is 80 degrees. Okay, so that's where, that's our starting point. All right. Now the next thing we'll do is um, we'll we'll apply our limit constraint now to this, so we can get that started. So what I'll find is our constraint section. We have that pulled up here, and, and rotation, which is right here. Select that, and it's and it pulls up now a couple of features, a couple of settings that we have to make. The only setting we're interested in here is our y axis because that's the only rotation and movement that will happen is on that y-axis. So select the y-axis. And um, what we'll set here for minimum movement is our minus 10 degrees. All right. Maximum movement, we want to have this move only or rotate only by 30 degrees. So we'll make this maximum 20 minus 10 and the difference between minus 10 and 20 is 30 degrees. So we pretty much set, we'll select this uh, for transform and let's test it. So select your slack adjuster, hit R for rotate, Y on the Y rotation and it moves only by 30 degrees, which is exactly what we want. It's locked in there. If I try and rotate it around, it's not going to go any further than our setting. So that's perfect. So that's what we wanted. Okay. So one thing, so one one setting is done here. Let's focus on our uh, clevis, which is which a push rod is parented to. A clevis we want to move only also by a certain amount. So its starting point will be here, and now we'll apply the limit this limit location constraint to it. So let's hit limit location right here. The uh, settings we're interested in, again, there's only one axis of interest, which is the X axis. So hit X, the minimum amount. And um, let's see what our distance here is for that. It's at 9.025. So let's set that at 9.025. Before we set the maximum, let's pull down the influence all the way. And to determine the maximum, it's going to be relative to our rotation of our slack adjuster. So let's say let's rotate a slack adjuster to its max, which is there. And now we can establish our max uh, movement on the x-axis for our clevis. So G X. And um, actually, let's go into wireframe again so we can have that centered as best as possible. Let's go back a little bit. So G X like that. Okay, so that should be good enough. Go out of wireframe. So this will be our max movement. Okay. What the reading over here for location 11.572. So let's set max at 11.572. 11.572. Hit enter and pull up our influence to max. And let's test it. Let's go GX. Oops. Uh, I'm going to select my clevis, so GX, and its max movement is set, it's locked in place, so that's exactly what we want. If I move it further than I want to, it will not move any more than its range. All right, so now we can apply our transform, a transformation constraint, so the two of these items move together as if, as if there is a pin, a pivot pin, um, locking them into place. So the one that's now the way the transformation constraint works is you want to apply it to the object getting modified, um, which in this case, the one that's getting modified or getting controlled uh, um, is controlled by the push rod is a slack adjuster. Because when this push rod moves, it applies that force to the slack adjuster. And that's what makes the slack adjuster rotate. So slack adjuster is getting the transformation constraint. Um, now we're ready, so you can apply multiple constraints to this. As you can see, we have a limit rotation constraint here. 
add your transformation constraint there at the bottom. And now I'm gonna increase this screen here, enlarge it for you so you can see what's going on. There's a bunch of more settings to make over here. Um, what we wanna look at here is the object causing the effect and the object receiving the effect. So source and target essentially, a source and destination. Now a source is our clevis. That's the one that's causing the effect. We're gonna pull it up here and hit clevis. Okay, I just noticed I've got um, clevis there and then a clevis one. Let's just see why I think I've called my push rod by accident clevis. Clevis one, I mean, so I'm gonna call, I'm just gonna correct that quickly. So push rod, just so we don't confuse any of our, oops, any of our, um, wording and names okay so go back to our slack adjuster over here and then the constraint screen okay so you select your target which will be the clevis okay then again same thing with our limit rotation or limit location we have we have a location setting or we have a location rotation of scale so the destination or the object that's causing the effect we want to find out what axis it is um, it is uh, moving on and if it's rotating or getting scaled or just moving. In this case, our clevis is moving on the x-axis like so. So we'll select, select our location and we're going to focus only on our x-axis settings. So our minimum and our maximum setting again, we'll go Minimum setting is 9.025. Whoops. We'll put that in here. 9.025. 9.025. Our maximum setting is, if I max it out over here, is 11.572. 11.572. Okay. So that's our max. Next box you got over here is again the same concept. The axis of our source and then the axis of our target object or destination that's, that's getting changed. So in this case, the axis of our source that we are focusing on is the x axis, okay, of the clevis. And the axis of the destination that's getting modified on a slack adjuster is our y axis for rotation so x to y x to y so we're looking to y is the destination x is the um, source so we're going to make this an x over here x is affecting y that's what we're going to change next box is our destination axis is it moving is it rotating or are we scaling it in this case we are rotating our y-axis so select rotate and focus on your y-axis right here so how much are we uh, changing this by again we know it's by 30 degrees um, I believe we just put in oh okay so that doesn't work so we're gonna make this keep this at zero the maximum amount all right now what's happening here is again if we are if we rotate our slack adjuster it to our right on the y-axis it actually is moving into the negative and let's just test that out so r y and let's look at our our rotation bar okay so it's moving not in the negative but the positive so okay so what we'll do is we'll keep this zero and we'll make this 30 and that should be it Let's give it a quick test. So G X. Oh, I guess like I keep forgetting that I select the clevis G X, and we have it set locked in place. See how that was done. So, all right, excellent. That's exactly the effect that we're wanting. So again, minimum is going to be at zero degrees. The maximum rotation is going to be at thirty degrees and then you get your desired effect 
GX, move it, test it, it moves as one. The push rods will push and move on the X axis, and at the same time, it's rotating our slack adjuster. Excellent. All right, now that's it for this tutorial. Next tutorial, we'll focus on the spring. Again, we'll apply a transformation uh, constraint on that as well. And um, first, we'll have to find our boundaries. We'll make a break part. We'll continue with this uh, assembly in the next few tutorials. Uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe, leave me comments, and we'll see you again. This is the Blender Mechanic signing out.